One of the things I notice sleep affects is uh, my ability to see the beauty in the world. Yeah. So um, what do you think is the connection between sleep and your emotional life? Your ability to love other human beings and love life. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's very powerful and strong. So we've done a lot of work in the field of sleep and emotion and sleep and moods. And you can separate your emotions into two main buckets, um, you know, positive and negative. And what's interesting is that when you are sleep deprived and the more hours that you go into being awake and the fewer hours that you've had to sleep, your your negative mood starts to increase. And and we we know which individual types of emotions are changing. I've got a wonderful um, postdoc in my lab called Etty Ben Simon, who's doing some incredible work on trying to understand the emotional, individual emotional tapestry of affective meltdown <laughs> when you're not getting <laughs> sufficient sleep. But let's just keep with two dimensions, positive and negative. Yes. The negative, most people would think, well, it's the negative that takes the biggest hit when I'm sleep deprived. It's not. By probably an or a log order magnitude larger is a hit on your positive emotions. In other words, you stop gaining pleasure from normally pleasurable things. And it's a state that we call anhedonia. And anhedonia is the state that we often call depression. So depression, to most people's surprise, isn't necessarily that you're always feeling negative emotions. It's often more about the fact that you lose the yeah. pleasure in the good things in life. That's what we call anhedonia. That's what we see in sleep and insufficient sleep. And it happens quite quickly. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating. I, um, I think I do, it's not depression, but like it's, uh, it, it's a stroll into that direction, which is when I'm sleep deprived, I stop being able to see the meaning in life. The things that gave me meanings starts to lose meaning, like stupid. I, it makes me realize how enjoyable everything is in my life because when I start to lose it, when I'm severely sleep deprived, you start to see how much life sucks when you lose it. But that said, when you, I'm just cognizant enough that like sleep fixes all of that. So I use those states for what they're worth. In fact, I personally like to pay attention to the things that uh, bother me in during that time, because they also reveal important information to me. It's <laughs> um, yeah, so interesting. I thought you used like a raw shock to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, so I, I find it when I fast combined with sleep deprivation, am clear to see with people, clear in identifying the things that are not going right in my life or um, uh, people that I'm working with are not doing as good of a job as they could be doing. Um, like people that are negative uh, in my life, I'm more able to identify them so I don't act on that. It's a very bad time to act on those decisions, but you- Good like point, well made. Recording, recording that information, because I usually, when I'm well rested and happy, I see the beauty in everybody, which can get you into trouble. <laughs> so you have, yeah. you have to balance those two things. But yes, it's but, fascinating. But, but there's so, irony there too, yes. which is the fact that, you know, when you're well rested and well slept, just as you said, you see the, the beauty in life and it sort of enlivens you and sort of, gives you a, a, a quality of, of life that's emotionally very different. Yet then we are contrasting that against the need for not getting enough sleep because of the beautiful things that you want to accomplish in life. And I don't actually see them as, you know, sort of completely counterintuitive or paradoxical, because I still think that you can strive for all of the brilliant things that you are striving for, to have the monumental goals, the Herculean challenges that you wish to take on and solve. Um, they can still enthrall you and excite you and stimulate you. But 
because of the insufficient sleep that they can or that goal can produce, it will shave off the beauty of life that you experience in between. And again, this is just about the trade-off. I will say though that, and this is not um, applicable to your circumstance, um, we do know that insufficient sleep is very strongly linked to suicide ideation, suicide attempts, and tragically suicide completion as well. And in fact, in 20 years of studying sleep, we have not been able to discover a single psychiatric condition in which sleep is normal. Mm. And I think that that is a profound state. I think it tells us so much about the role of sleep as a potential causal agent in psychiatric conditions. Mm -hmm. I also think it's a potential sign that we should be using sleep as a tool yeah. for the prevention of grave mental illness. Yeah, it's both a cause and, and, and a solution. So yeah, I, I, I mean, me, me personally, I've, I've gone through a few dark periods uh, quite recently, and it, it was almost always sleep is not the cause, but sleep is the catalyst from going to a, uh, a bad time to a very bad time. <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's, def it's definitely true. And it's funny how sleep can just cure all of that. There's actually a beautiful quote by an American entrepreneur called E. Joseph Kosman, who once said that the best bridge between despair and hope is a good night's sleep. <laughs> and I spilled uh, it's quite true. so much ink and hundreds of pages inelegantly trying to say the same thing in my book. And he said it in one line and line. it's beautiful.